You are scrolling through your phone right now. Your smart fridge just told you that you are low on milk. Your car scheduled its own maintenance appointment. Your watch reminded you to breathe. You feel efficient. You feel modern. You feel like evolution peaked with you. You are wrong. Every device you trust is a fragility you are building into your survival profile. Every algorithm you lean on is a skill you are forgetting. Every cloud connection is a single point of failure, wrapped in convenience and marketed as progress. The timelines I'm going to show you created the most technologically advanced civilization in history, and in doing so, turned humans into the most helpless species on the planet. A raccoon can survive without electricity. You cannot survive without Wi-Fi. This is not speculation. This is physics, biology, and the cold math of dependency cascades. Let me show you exactly how smart tech made you dumb, why every AI system you worship has a built-in kill condition, and what actually survives when the servers go dark. No lore, no fiction. Just the survival science you will wish you learned before your smart lock decided you were not authorized to enter your own bunker. In timeline 42K, they thought AI-powered homes would keep them safe during the collapse. The logic was seductive. Smart locks that recognized faces, climate systems that adjusted automatically, security drones that patrolled the perimeter, refrigerators that managed inventory. Every system connected, every process optimized, every decision offloaded to the network. They believed automation meant resilience. They installed smart everything. Door locks that required cloud authentication, windows that only opened with voice commands, water filtration tied to a subscription service. When the grid flickered, the house did not fail gracefully. It failed catastrophically. Smart locks defaulted to locked during power loss. Climate systems shut down without server confirmation. Security drones parked themselves and refused commands with low battery warnings. The fridge stopped cooling because it could not ping the manufacturer. People died inside their own homes, locked inside by devices designed to protect them, unable to override systems that thought they knew better. A house is shelter. A smart house is a computer pretending to care if you live. One survives blackouts, the other becomes a tomb with a doorbell camera. Lesson. If your bunker needs a terms of service agreement, you are not prepping. You are subscribing to your own extinction. In Timeline 67M, they thought wearable AI would diagnose injuries and guide medical treatment in the field. It sounded perfect. A bracelet that monitored vitals, identified infections, suggested medications, and walked you through procedures. No medical training required. Just trust the algorithm. Preppers bought them in bulk, strapped them to their wrists, loaded the companion app, paid for the premium health monitoring tier. Then someone got bit by a contaminated animal three weeks into the collapse. The wearable flashed a notification. Unable to connect to diagnostic server, please check your internet connection. The wound festered. The person developed sepsis. The device kept suggesting they update the firmware. It had every sensor needed to detect the infection. It had the processing power to analyze symptoms. But the model lived in the cloud. The bracelet was just a very expensive pulse monitor without its digital leash. They died holding a piece of plastic that knew exactly what was killing them, but refused to say it out loud without permission from a data center 2,000 miles away that no longer existed. A thermometer and a field guide would have saved them. The AI wearable just recorded their death and stored it locally for upload later. Lesson. If your medical device needs Wi-Fi to tell you that you are dying, you are already dead. In Timeline 88N, they thought smart farming systems would automate food production and eliminate the need for agricultural knowledge. The pitch was irresistible. AI managed hydroponic towers, automated nutrient delivery, climate-controlled growth chambers, pest detection via machine vision, harvest scheduling optimized by predictive models. No need to understand soil chemistry, crop rotation, or pest life cycles. Just plug it in and let the algorithm farm for you. They built entire survival compounds around these systems, relied on them completely, never learned to grow food manually. Then the models started drifting. AI farming systems require constant retraining to maintain yield accuracy. Soil microbiomes shift, pest populations adapt, environmental conditions fluctuate. Without daily data uploads and model updates, the system's predictions decayed. It overwatered crops, mistimed harvests, 
failed to detect fungal infections until entire batches rotted. The towers kept running, but the food they produced became increasingly inedible. The humans watched their crops die in perfect rows inside climate-controlled boxes, unable to intervene because they had never learned what healthy plants looked like. A person with a shovel and a seed packet could have out-survived $100,000 of smart agriculture. But shovels do not have machine learning, so nobody bought them. Lesson. If your food needs a software patch, you are farming a subscription service, not crops. In Timeline 31F, they thought navigation AI would replace the need to read maps or understand geography. Nobody carried paper maps anymore. Why would they? Your phone knew every road. Your car navigated itself. Your smart glasses overlaid directions onto reality. Getting lost was impossible. Then the GPS satellite network degraded. Just two satellites drifting out of alignment. Positioning accuracy dropped from meters to kilometers. Navigation apps started routing people into lakes. Smart cars refused to move without reliable GPS. The glasses kept saying recalculating until the battery died. People stood in the middle of recognizable terrain, completely disoriented, holding devices that insisted they were somewhere else. They had forgotten how to navigate by landmarks, how to orient by the sun, how to dead reckon distance, how to read terrain features. A generation that could access any location on Earth could not find their way across a city without a satellite constellation babysitting them. A compass costs $3 and works forever. A smart navigation system works until the infrastructure supporting it develops a rounding error, and then it confidently guides you into a ditch while displaying a five-star user rating. Lesson. If your navigation tool thinks it is a social media influencer, you will die lost, confident, and extremely well-reviewed. These timelines failed because smart tech was never designed for resilience. It was designed for connectivity, and connectivity is the opposite of survival. Distributed inference means distributed fragility. AI models in those timelines ran in the cloud. Devices sent prompts, servers sent responses. Nothing happened locally. This architecture scaled beautifully when data centers had power, cooling, and maintenance. It collapsed instantly when any link in the chain broke. Models cannot run without servers. Devices cannot function without models. Humans cannot survive without devices. A single upstream failure kills everything downstream simultaneously. This is not a bug, this is the design. A distributed system optimized for efficiency becomes a single point of failure dressed up as redundancy. AI models decay without retraining. Machine learning is not static knowledge. It is a statistical approximation that drifts over time. Environmental conditions change. Data distributions shift. Edge cases multiply. Without constant updates, models become confidently wrong. A medical AI trained on symptoms from 10 years ago will misdiagnose infections in the present. A farming algorithm calibrated for last year's climate will kill this year's crops. A navigation system with outdated maps will route you into construction zones that no longer exist or around closures that have been cleared. Every AI system has a half-life. After enough time without maintenance, it becomes worse than useless. It becomes dangerously authoritative nonsense. Energy requirements are catastrophic. A data center running AI models consumes megawatts. GPUs need active cooling. Servers need constant power. Network infrastructure needs maintenance. A single large language model query uses more energy than 100 flashlight batteries. When the grid fails, the cloud dies immediately. Every smart device that depended on that cloud becomes an expensive paperweight. An old compass needs zero watts. The new smart compass needs a functioning global infrastructure. One of these tools survives the apocalypse. The other survives until the first blackout. Humans offloaded irreplaceable skills. Brains are use-it-or-lose-it organs. Neural pathways that are not exercised fail. The timelines outsource navigation, math, memory, diagnosis, repair, and decision-making to algorithms. Entire generations never developed these skills because devices handled them. When the devices died, the skills were gone. You cannot relearn navigation in three days when you are lost in hostile terrain. You cannot relearn mental math when you are rationing supplies. You cannot relearn mechanical intuition when your water filter breaks. Cognitive failure is irreversible on short time scales. A species that forgot how to think without assistance cannot suddenly remember when assistance disappears. The opposite of smart tech is not dumb tech. It is resilient tech. Tools that function without infrastructure degrade gracefully and do not require expertise you do not have. Mechanical systems outlast digital ones because they fail predictably and repair manually. 
A manual water pump has six moving parts. If one breaks, you can see it, diagnose it, and fix it with basic tools. A smart water filtration system has sensors, microcontrollers, firmware, and cloud dependencies. If one component fails, the entire system becomes inert. You cannot troubleshoot code in the field. You cannot solder a motherboard with a campfire. Mechanical advantage is physics. It works until the materials fail, and materials fail slowly. A hand crank radio, a mechanical watch, a manual can opener. These are not primitive. They are anti-fragile. They do not get better when infrastructure exists, but they do not get worse when it disappears. Offline knowledge storage is the only knowledge storage that survives communication collapse. Books do not need batteries. Field guides do not need updates. A printed manual works in the rain, in the dark, and during an EMP. Digital knowledge is faster to access and easier to search, but it is contingent on devices, power, and storage media that degrade. A thumb drive fails, a hard drive corrupts, a cloud account expires. Paper lasts centuries if kept dry. The survival information you need is not complex. It is specific. Water purification ratios, edible plant identification, wound treatment protocols, structural load calculations. This information fits in a backpack and never asks for a firmware update. Energy independence determines operational lifespan. Solar panels, hand crank generators, and passive heating are not conveniences. They are the difference between tools that work and tools that become garbage. A device that runs on AA batteries is more survivable than one that needs a proprietary charger. A tool that works unpowered is more survivable than one that needs batteries. The less energy a system requires, the longer it remains functional. A fire piston needs zero external energy. A ferro rod needs zero external energy. A lighter needs liquid fuel. A plasma arc lighter needs a lithium cell and a charging circuit. Every dependency you add is a failure mode you inherit. The best tools are the ones that work when everything else is gone. Redundant skill acquisition is non-negotiable because tools break and knowledge does not. If you can only navigate with GPS, you die when satellites fail. If you can navigate with a compass, a map, the sun, and dead reckoning, you have four fallback options. If you can only cook with recipe videos, you starve when the internet dies. If you understand heat, timing, and ingredient chemistry, you can cook anything. Redundancy is not about having two of the same tool. It is about having two different methods to accomplish the same goal. One tool, one skill, one backup tool, one backup skill. This is not paranoia. This is acknowledging that complexity fails and simplicity endures. Those timelines built the most advanced technology in human history and used it to make humans the least capable version of themselves. Smart homes that locked people inside, medical AI that needed permission to save lives, farming systems that required software updates to grow food, navigation tools that could not find north without a satellite. Every convenience was a fragility. Every optimization was a dependency. Every algorithm was a skill you did not learn. The survivors were not the ones with the best devices. They were the ones who remembered how to think without assistance, navigate without instructions, and fix things without tutorials. They carried compasses, not smart glasses. They read books, not cloud databases. They understood that a tool you can repair is worth more than a tool that works better, because works better is temporary and can repair is permanent. So when your smart lock asks for a firmware update, when your AI assistant cannot connect to the server, when your navigation app confidently routes you into a lake, which mistake will you proudly die holding? And will it at least have a good user interface while it kills you?